It so happened. Supplementary reader in English for class eight, page eighty nine, chapter eleven, ancient education system of India, part one. Did you know that India has been the center of learning since ancient times? How did we come to know about this? There are inscriptions on stones and copper. palm leaf records and our scriptures as evidences of the historic origins of learning in india today we follow an education system in which learning takes place through syllabus curricula textbooks and assessment practices have you ever thought what these were like in the past in this feature story we will give you glimpses of our ancient education system introduction you must have heard or read that travelers from various regions having different climates and cultures began to visit parts of india from early times to them india was a land of wonder the fame of indian culture wealth religions philosophies art architecture as well as its educational practices had spread far and wide the education system of ancient times was regarded as a source for the knowledge traditions and practices that guided and encouraged humanity page 90 salient features of ancient education system from the time of rigveda onwards our ancient education system evolved over the period and focused on the holistic development of the individual by taking care of both the inner and the outer self the system focused on the moral physical spiritual and intellectual aspects of life it emphasized on values such as humility truthfulness discipline self-reliance and respect for all creations students were taught to appreciate the balance between human beings and nature teaching and learning followed the tenets of vedas and upanishads fulfilling duties towards self family and society thus encompassing all aspects of life education system focused both on learning and physical development in other words the emphasis was on healthy mind and healthy body you can see that education in india has a heritage of being pragmatic achievable and complementary to life sources of education the ancient system of education was the education of the vedas brahmanas upanishads and dharma sutras You must have heard the names of Aryabhatta, Panini, Katyayana, and Patanjali. Their writings and the medical treatises of Charaka and Shushruta were also some of the sources of learning. Word meaning, heritage, something that is handed down from the past as a tradition. Tenets means. the main principles of a religion or philosophy here you will see a page from a manuscript of the rigveda this birch bark manuscript of the rigveda was found in kashmir about 150 years ago it was used to prepare one of the earliest printed texts of the rigveda as well as an english translation It is now preserved in a library in Pune, Maharashtra. Page ninety one. Distinction was also drawn between shastras, learned disciplines, and kavyas, imaginative and creative literature. Sources of learning were drawn from various disciplines such as itihas, history, anviksiki, logic, mimamsa. interpretation shilpa shastra architecture artha shastra polity varta agriculture trade
कॉमर्स एनिमल हजबेंड्री एंड धनुर्विद्या आर्चरी फिजिकल एजुकेशन टू वॉज एन इम्पॉर्टेंट करिक्युलर एरिया एंड पीपल्स पार्टिसिपेटेड इन क्रीडा गेम्स रेक्रिएशनल एक्टिविटीज व्यायाम प्रकार एक्सरसाइजेस धनुर्विद्या आर्चरी फॉर एक्वायरिंग मार्शल स्किल्स एंड योग साधना ट्रेनिंग द माइंड एंड बॉडी अमंग अदर्स द गुरूज एंड देर प्यूपल्स वर्कड कॉन्साइंटियसली टुगेदर टू बिकम प्रोफिशेंट इन ऑल एस्पेक्ट्स ऑफ लर्निंग इन ऑर्डर टू असेस प्यूपल्स लर्निंग शास्त्रार्था लर्नड डिबेट्स वेर ऑर्गनाइज्ड pupils at an advanced stage of learning guided younger pupils there also existed the system of peer learning like you have group or peer work ancient education system in india a way of life in ancient india both formal and informal ways of education system existed indigenous education was imparted at home in temples पाठशालास तोल्स चौतस्पदीस एंड गुरुकुल्स देर वेर पीपल इन होम्स विलेजेस एंड टेम्पल्स हु गाइडेड यंग चिल्ड्रन इन इम्बाइबिंग पायस वेज ऑफ लाइफ टेम्पल्स वेर ऑल्सो द सेंटर्स ऑफ लर्निंग एंड टुक इंटरेस्ट इन द प्रमोशन ऑफ नॉलेज ऑफ आर एंशियंट सिस्टम स्टूडेंट्स वेंट टू विहारास एंड यूनिवर्सिटीज फॉर हायर नॉलेज teaching was largely oral and students remembered and meditated upon what was taught in the class word meaning indigenous meaning originating or occurring naturally in a particular place vihara meaning buddhist monastery page 92 gurukuls also known as ashrams were the residential places of learning many of these were named after the sages situated in forests in serene and peaceful surroundings hundreds of students used to learn together in gurukuls women too had access to education during the early vedic period among the prominent women vedic scholars we find references to maitri vishwambhara apala gargi and lopamudra to name a few during that period the gurus and their shishyas lived together helping each other in day to day life the main objective was to have complete learning leading a disciplined life and realizing one's inner potential students lived away from their homes for years together till they achieved their goals The Gurukul was also the place where the relationship of the guru and the shishya strengthened with time. While pursuing their education in different disciplines like history, art of debate, law, medicine, etc., the emphasis was not only on the outer dimensions of the discipline but also on enriching inner dimensions of the personality. comprehension check question 1 why were travelers attracted towards india question 2 what were the sources of the ancient education system question 3 what were the features of education system in india question 4 what was the role of guru in pupils lives part 2 In part 1 you have read about the ancient education system in ashrams or gurukuls and the way of life in them this system continued to flourish during the time of the buddha and the subsequent periods many monasteries viharas were set up for monks and nuns to meditate debate and discuss with the learned for their quest for knowledge during this period around these viharas other educational centers of higher learning developed which attracted students from china korea tibet burma ceylon java nepal 
and other distant countries word meaning monastery meaning a place where the monks line and worship page 93 viharas and universities the jataka tales accounts given by swan zhang and ai king chinese scholars as well as other sources tell us that kings and society took active interest in promoting education as a result many famous educational centers came into existence among the most notable universities that evolved during this period were situated at takshashila nalanda balabhi vikramshila odantapuri and jagadala these universities developed in connection with the viharas those at banaras navadeep and kanchi developed in connection with temples and became centers of community life in the places where they were situated these institutions catered to the needs of advanced level students such students joined the centers of higher learning and developed their knowledge by mutual discussions and debates with renowned scholars not only this there was also occasional summoning by a king to a gathering in which the scholars of the country of various viharas and universities would meet debate and exchange their views in this section we will give you glimpses of two universities of the ancient period these universities were considered among the best centers of learning in the world These have been recently declared heritage sites by the United Nations Educational, Scientific and Cultural Organization also known as UNESCO. Takshashila or Taksila. In ancient times, Takshashila was a noted center of learning including religious teachings of Buddhism for several centuries. It continued to attract students from around the world. until its destruction in the 5th century CE word meaning summon meaning to officially arrange a meeting of people university meaning institution of higher education page 94 it was known for its higher education and the curriculum comprised the study of ancient scriptures law medicine astronomy military science and the 18 shilpas or arts takshashila became famous as a place of learning due to its teachers expertise among its noted pupils were the legendary indian grammarian panini he was an expert in language and grammar and authored one of the greatest works on grammar called ashtadhyayi Jivaka one of the most renowned physicians in ancient India and Chanakya also known as Kautilya a skilled exponent of state craft both studied here students came to Takshashila from Kashi Kosala Magadha and also from other countries in spite of the long and arduous journey they had to undertake Takshashila was an ancient Indian city which is now in northwestern pakistan it is an important archaeological site and the unesco declared it to be a world heritage site in 1980 its fame rested on the university where chanakya is said to have composed his arthashastra archaeologist alexander cunningham discovered its ruins in the mid 19th century role of the teacher teachers had complete autonomy in all aspects from selection of students to designing their syllabi when the teacher was satisfied with the performance of the students the course concluded word meaning autonomy meaning freedom to act on one's will state craft meaning the skill of governing a country page 95 he would admit as many students as he liked 
and taught what his students were keen to learn. Debate and discussions were the primary methods of teaching. Teachers were assisted by their advanced level students. Nalanda University Nalanda, when Xuan Zhang visited it, was called Nala and was a centre of higher learning in various subjects. The university attracted scholars from the different parts of the country as well as world. The Chinese scholars Ai King and Xuan Zhang visited Nalanda in the 7th century CE. They have given vivid accounts of Nalanda. They have noted that as many as 100 discourses happened on a daily basis in a variety of disciplines through the methods of debate and discussions. Xuan Zhang himself became a student of Nalanda to study Yoga Shastra. He has mentioned that the Chancellor of Nalanda, Shilabhadra, was the highest living authority in yoga. The courses of study offered by Nalanda University covered a wide range, almost the entire circle of knowledge then available. Students at Nalanda studied the Vedas and were also trained in fine arts, medicine, mathematics, astronomy, politics and the art of warfare. The ancient Nalanda was a centre of learning from the 5th century CE to 12th century CE. Located in present-day Rajgir, Bihar, India, Nalanda was one of the oldest universities of the world and UNESCO declared the ruins of Nalanda Mahavihara a world heritage site. The new Nalanda University is envisaged as a centre of inter-civilizational dialogue. Page 96 Role of Community At that time, knowledge was considered sacred and no fee was charged. Contributions towards education were considered the highest form of donation. All members of the society contributed in some form or the other. Financial support came from the rich merchants, wealthy parents and society. Besides gifts of buildings, the universities received gifts of land. This form of free education was also prevalent in other ancient universities like Vallabhi, Vikramashila and Jagadala. At the same time, in the south of India, Agraharas, served as centre of learning and teaching. South Indian kingdoms also had other cultural institutions known as Ghatika and Brahmapuri. A Ghatika was a centre of learning including religion and was small in size. An Agrahara was a bigger institution. A whole settlement of learned Brahmins with its own powers of government and was maintained by generous donations from the society. Temples, mathas, Jain Basadis and Buddhist Viharas also existed as other sources of learning during this period. Continuation of Indian Education System The Indian education system continued in the form of ashramas, in temples and as indigenous schools. During the medieval period, Maktabas and Madarsas became part of the education system. During the pre-colonial period, indigenous education flourished in India. This was an extension of the formal system that had taken roots earlier. This system was mostly religious and spiritual form of education. Tolls in Bengal, Patashalas in Western India, Chatuspadis in Bihar and similar schools existed in other parts of India. Local resources via donations supported education. References in texts and memoirs inform that villagers also supported education in southern India. As we understand, the ancient education system of India focused on the holistic development of the students, both inner and outer self, 
thus preparing them for life. Education was free and not centralized. Page 97 Its foundations were laid in the rich cultural traditions of India, thereby helping in the development of the physical, intellectual, spiritual and artistic aspects of life holistically. Our present-day education system has a lot to learn from the ancient education system of India. Therefore, the stress is being laid on connecting learning to the world outside the school. Today, educationists recognize the role and importance of multilingual and multicultural education, thereby connecting the ancient and the traditional knowledge with contemporary learning. Comprehension Check Question 1 where did nuns and monks receive their education? Question 2. What is Panini known for? Question 3. Which university did Xuan Zhang and I King study at? Question 4. Which subject did Xuan Zhang study in India? Question 5. How did society help in the education of the students? Exercise. Discuss the following questions in small groups and write your answers. Question 1. Which salient features of the ancient education system of India made it globally renowned? Question 2. Why do you think students from other countries came to India to study at that time? Question 3. Why is education considered a way of life? Question 4. What do you understand by holistic education? Question 5. Why do you think Takshashila and Nalanda have been declared heritage sites? Think it over. Talk to your history teacher and find out more about Takshashila and Nalanda universities. What could have been the geographical locations of these universities at that time? It so happened. You were just listening to this audio book. Production Assistance Meenakshi Kukreti Recorded by Batilang Lingdo Technical Assistance Vikas Sangwan Produced by Ajit Horu And presented by CIET NCERT New Delhi 2021